Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. In this video, I will explain about the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis consists of two main stages, the light-dependent stage and the light-independent stage. In the light-dependent stage, light energy is being captured by the photosynthetic pigments in the photosystem. The photosystem is found on the thylakoid membrane. The energy is used to produce ATP and reduce NADP. These products will then be used in the light-independent stage, which consists of a process known as the Kelvin cycle. ATP supplies energy to the process, while reduced NADP supplies the reducing power. Photosynthetic products such as glucose, amino acids, or lipids will be produced. ADP and NADP will return to the light-dependent stage to form ATP and reduce NADP again. This cycle goes on and on. The light dependent stage happens when light energy is captured by the pigments in the photosystem and photophosphorylation occurs. Photophosphorylation means the formation of ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate by using the light energy. There are two types of photophosphorylation, the cyclic photophosphorylation and the non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Let's look at the cyclic photophosphorylation. Light energy is being captured by the accessory pigments in photosystem 1. The energy is being passed to the reaction center where chlorophyll A is located. The electron in the reaction center gets the energy and is boosted to a higher energy level. The excited electron will be emitted from the reaction center. It is received by the primary electron acceptor. Then, it is passed along a series of electron carriers in the ETC electron transport chain the energy in the electron is used to pump protons across the thylakoid membrane. As protons diffuse out from the lumen to the matrix of chloroplasts through the ATP synthase, ATP is produced by chemiosmosis, just like how it happens in the mitochondrion during the oxidative phosphorylation. At the end of the ETC, the electron is no longer at a high energy level. It will return to the photosystem 1. The movement of the electron in a cycle is the reason why we call this cyclic photophosphorylation. In a non-cyclic photophosphorylation, light energy is first absorbed by the pigments in the photosystem 2. The energy is transferred to the reaction center. Electron in the reaction center is boosted to a higher energy level and emitted from the reaction center. The electron passes along a series of electron carriers in the ETC, and ATP is produced by a chemiosmosis. The electron is received by photosystem 1. It does not go back to photosystem 2. More light energy is absorbed and the electron is boosted to a higher energy level again. It is emitted from the reaction center and accepted by the primary electron acceptor. This time, it will be received by NADP. NADP takes the electron and combines with a proton to form the reduced NADP. Since the electron does not go back to the photosystem 2, we need to find a way to replace the electron loss. That is why photolysis occurs. A water molecule splits and the electron release is used to replace the electron loss from the photosystem too. Oxygen is produced as a waste product. The ATP and reduced NADP produced by the cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation can now be used in the light-independent stage. The light-independent stage occurs in the stroma. It does not require light energy, but it uses energy and reducing power comes from the light-dependent reaction. It can continue when the light is out until ATP and reduced NADP are used up. We can describe the Kelvin cycle in three parts, the carbon fixation, the reduction process, and the regeneration of RUBP. Firstly, a carbon dioxide binds to a 5 carbon molecule called RUBP by the enzyme Rubisco. A 6-carbon intermediate is formed. It is highly unstable, so it splits immediately into two 3-carbon compounds called glycerate phosphate, or GP. Then, the GP is being reduced. It is done by the reduced NADP comes from the light-dependent reaction. It is also activated by the ATP comes from the light-dependent reaction. A triose phosphate, which is also known as G3P, is formed. Some of the carbons in the G3P is used to form the photosynthetic products such as glucose and amino acids, 
while the rest of them is used to regenerate RUBP, so the cycle can continue. Energy from ATP is required in this step. Now, the carbon number of these molecules doesn't really make sense, isn't it? In fact, we need several Kelvin cycle to form one molecule of photosynthetic product. Let's use glucose as an example. To produce one molecule of glucose with six carbons, we need six carbon dioxide and six RUBP. This will give us six unstable intermediates, and then 12 GP. With the help of 12 ATP and 12 reduced NADP, we will have 12 G3P. Since each one of them has three carbons, now we have 12 times three, 36 carbons in total. Six of these carbons will be used to make one molecule of glucose. We are now left with 30 carbons. These carbons will be rearranged and form six RUBP, as each of them has five carbons. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.